أتدري من يزيل الهم إن ضاقت بك الدنيا ومن And if you understand, people have got two types. One is a person who impacts society and he changes society and the other person is he who is impacted by society. And if you look at the history of recent Muslim migration, you will see that those people whose da'wah was not progressive, whose da'wah was not proactive, then they assimilated into the wide and conducive society. You look at the, you look at the Muslims who went to South America. Look at their history. You ask these Muslims today, they will tell you that our forefathers were Muslims, our forefathers were Arabs, and you ask them about their deen, they know nothing about their deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala articulates this state in the Quran. He says, Do not be like those who forgot Allah and Allah made them forget themselves. They turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah made their existence empty. They turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they lived, but they lived without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know what you're going to say to me. You're going to say, no, Mulana, but the thing is that we got these huge masjids. We got these huge darlums. We got scholars. Every rock you turn, you will find a mufti, even if he hasn't studied. But let me tell you about a society which had bigger masjids than you had, which had bigger scholars than you had, which had bigger darlums than you had. This was Muslim Spain. It had far bigger masjids than you had. Qurtaba, in the height of its flowering, had over 600 masjids. And recently, a couple of years, 19 of us from this masjid went to Qurtaba, where there were 600 masjids. We found one, and that was closed. Why? What happened? Because these were people who forgot Allah, and Allah made them forget themselves. And you look at the scholars of Spain. Who were the scholars of Spain? They were the likes of Ibn Hazm. They were the likes of Imam Qurtubi. They were the likes of Ibn Abdul Barr. They were the thinkers like Ibn Sina, Ibn Rushd. These were people who were the backbone of Islamic learning. There were no greater scholars than these in the history of Islam. And in Toulouse, Spain was built on the model of Medina. And as long as their focus remained on Medina, they flourished. But when their focus turned toward the dunya, then that same progressive society sank because the Muslims were not created for the dunya. The Muslims were not created for the dunya. The Muslims were created for the hereafter. We are Abdullah. We are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the highest status that we can reach is that we remain the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This very society, Spain, when their own people their focus became the dunya, that every single person was concerned about himself. He was concerned about his own kursi. And the narrations mentioned that the rulers of Spain, what they would do, that the Muslims would actually make treaties with the Christians and they would fight against their own Muslims. They would fight against their own Muslims. And one place after the other fell in Muslim Spain. One place after the other, besides, until there was only one place left and that was Granada. And Granada fell 50 years after the rest of Spain. Until Abu Muhammad, he drew a treaty with the Christians on the condition that he allowed them to take over on the condition that they would not persecute the Muslim, that they would not forcefully convert the Muslims, that they would not remove the Muslim from their post. And when the Christians came in, the first thing they did, they reneged on their promise. And when they entered the Alhambra palace, they found the highest place that they could find and they erected a crucifix there. And when Abu Muhammad saw this, he began to cry. He began to cry and his mother rebuked him. She said, why are you crying like a woman when you couldn't defend it like a man? Why are you crying like a woman, woman when you couldn't defend it like a man? And this is our state today, really. We whinge about everything. We blame everybody else besides ourselves. We blame the Christians, we blame the Jews, we blame everybody else. But it's one person we don't blame, it's us. We even blame time. The Zamana Yesai. As Arabic poet says, it's a no'ibu zamana na wal aibu fina wa mali zamana na aibun siwana. He said, we find fault in time, but the reality is that the fault lies within us. And if there was any one fault in time, if there was any one fault in time, it is that it has to carry the likes of me and you. That's the only fault with time. And you look at our state, we want the dunya to convert, but look at ourselves, look at our state. We are regarded by the rest of humanity as the most self-righteous, self-conceited, whinging group of people on the face of this earth.
because we are only blaming other people for our decadence that we find ourselves in. And the reality is that we need to have a proactive approach. We need to put our energies back into society. We need to change ourselves. Because if we can't change ourselves, there's no way that we're going to revolutionize the dunya. You know, if you can't wake up for the Fajr Namaz, then don't speak about revolutionizing the world, really.